Hello Zero K fans and welcome to Nanalid Zidane. I'm your host Shadow Fury 333 and today we're going to have a few exhibition matches as per more or less usual. As mentioned before, Tuesdays are going to be back to basically more exhibition matches rather than FP VODs. Google Frog the other day and actually it was starting at my economy more stable, which is good. I'm getting better. Anyway, we might as well get started. So, Icons versus Dynefront on Titan Duel is the first match for a night. No real reason to dawdle on this one. So, Icons starting out light vehicles, Dynefront starting out heavy tanks. Very typical start for this map. Although, admittedly, I have seen a fair amount of like shields and spiders and jump bots in this map recently, so this map is pretty open. More people are being really experimental, one of the two. At any rate, Dynefront with heavy tanks going starting welder, kind of typical thing, and starting Kodachi, which for raiding. Icons, on the other hand, going for early dart, and do they do something? No, they haven't. Hmm. Anyway. Sorry, I don't know why I'm messing with the camera. It works! Sorry, I spent a little bit of time just finishing up the camera thing so it doesn't jitter so much. And I think I succeeded. Which is really cool. Although, extremely frustrating that it took as long as it did, so yeah. But I think it's basically good. So that means that's basically it for now for me for programming for this game, as mentioned earlier. But anyway, beside the point, Dimefront Icons starting out with standard rating. Dimefront a little bit behind on energy, finally getting it. Apparently they have a widget telling themselves to do so. Icons we know has a widget to do so, and... Or no, it was Ivan D. Not Icons. Ivan D has such a widget. Icons doesn't really need it at the moment from the looks of it. They do have pretty good energy, and nice rating coming in from... Icons getting Dynefriend to kill off his own Metal Extractor, so Dynefriend is quite behind in economy, actually. Icons has expanded, let's see, a couple of Metal Extractors here, here, a couple of Scorches too, haven't even used those to attack. Dynefriend trying to ninja an expansion in the northeast, just cheat one out. This is very clever. If this is done successfully, then that would work beautifully. I'm kind of guessing Dynefriend's going to take these, defend it a bit, go back to the Metal Extractor, sorry, the Geothermal Plant, I can't even hover over it. Go over to the geothermal plant, or geothermal vent rather, and make a geothermal plant there, and then just connect it all the way to these metal extractors to overdrive them. That's not an uncommon thing, but I don't see a lot of players do it. It's not uncommon, but it's not super common either. And Dynefront, ouch! Losing a Kodachi to three defenders, Icons really focusing on their main base. They have the economic advantage for now, they're definitely pushing out. They've invested a lot into defense though, they are not raiding at all. Dynefront's totally getting away with this expansion right now. Icons has no idea. Uh, however, Icons is clearly going kind of favoring the north side. They're they're expanding along these metal extractors to the north. Along that trend line, they would be hitting the northeast and would be hitting Dynefront's expansion, which of course kind of makes that a little bit more complicated. But at this point, Icons they're going for a big raid. They don't want the tiny raids. Five scorchers coming in here into Dynefront's base. There is nothing to help with this. Nowhere near enough. Dynefront's commander is not leveled up enough or not upgraded enough. Dynefront is running out of energy still. They're getting their metal up, but their energy is way down. Although at this point, I'm not too concerned. They are not accessing metal. That's the real key thing. If you're accessing metal, problem. If you're not accessing metal, it's not a big deal. Get energy, use the metal, but as long as you're not accessing metal, then you're okay. You can spend it later. Unfortunately, later may not happen as Iken slash Ike and Scorches are getting into Dynefront's base. Dynefront also seeing there's a couple Scorches to the north. They haven't figured out the northeastern expansion, the cheat expansion, and they are dying in the process of their fight, so they won't find it. But that's kind of irrelevant with these five scorches to the south finally putting on the attack. And Dimefriend should be able to get rid of one or two of the Lotus. Actually, they aren't targeting the Lotus. This is working well for Dimefriend in the sense that they are actually able to get that Lotus to not die completely, but it's not working well at all in the long run, and that's the Heavy Tank Factory down. The Lotus cannot hit the last couple scorchers. The Heavy Tank Factory's down. The scorchers Almost down, about to be finished off, but that was an extremely large blow. Dynefront was already behind economically. Now they're behind militarily, don't have production at all. Icons can do whatever they want for the next minute. And it's only been four minutes into the game, so that's a lot of game that they can do anything they want in. Dynefront proxying a heavy tank factory, setting one up over in the north by their hidden expansion. Does Icons have radar on this yet? No, they do not. Icons has no idea what's going on here, so Icons. In the dark about Dynefront's expansion, which is their only hope at this point. Icons, on the other hand, they are just expanding kind of conservatively. They aren't even using this mason anymore. Leaving that one idle. Another one to the southwest. 
And not much... Oh, yeah, actually, they're going for the southwest first. They aren't really going for the northeast. Like I said, they have no idea anything's been built there. Yeah, still don't. But they... Oops. But regardless, they don't care. I mean, they're attacking the... Ma oh, never mind. This mason is going to be going over here in about a minute. So the heavy tank factory won't be quite rebuilt by then. If a caretaker had been built up, that would have helped a bit. Would have dropped it by about 30 seconds. But at this point, 30 seconds means something. Dying friend... Not rebuilding much on their main base, not reclaiming their factory, although at this point they would be accessing if they did so. And it'll be another, looks like, 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds before the worker sees the Heavy Tank Factory. Heavy Tank Factory is almost done, 20 seconds away from being done. It'll be finished by the time Mason sees it. There's no radar up yet. This is really tense, because if Dying Friend's able to get that Heavy Tank Factory up, they should be able to at least get a few Panthers up, get rid of the Scorchers... Kodachis aren't really going to cut it. They need Panthers. They get those up. Get rid of the Scorchers. That should do the trick. Are they building? Are they building? Yes, they are getting Banishers up. Okay, not a bad choice either. The Mason about to see it. The Banisher... Oh, if this was being assisted... Diamond Friend, assist! Why is this not assisting? Actually, why is that not auto-assisting for that matter? Oh, if this assisted, this would be almost done by now. Like, that'd be about 10 seconds from being done. There we go. Get that assist going. Because this Banisher is a big deal. But it looks like Dying Friend's main base... Getting a bit more defenses. They're... They're kind of prepared for what's going on, but not really. The thing is, the Northeast has been revealed. This is the problem. The Northeast is revealed and under-defended. Icons... Icons just got the jack... They just won the jackpot at this point when it came to information. This was Dying Throne's trump card, and they've lost it. Or at least, it's become far less valuable than it would have been. Dying Throne, however, still building up their main base. One thing they do have going for them, despite the fact that it's a little bit difficult to defend both, they do have two completely separate bases on different corners of the map. So these Scorchers here, they could split up. They're not going to. It looks like Iken's going to attack the north directly. They could split up, but overall, Icons basically cannot bring their forces to bear on Dying Throne's entire economy at once. Although the production, obviously, is more focused in the north. And Ravagers, to finish that off, along with the Scorchers, there is not enough here. Icons just wins Dying Throne and throws in the towel. That was that was kind of clever, but unfortunately, it like losing the main base, getting hit so hard in the main base, was a massive blow. That crippled Dying Throne. Icons, they were just expanding pretty comfortably. Now, there wasn't really anything they were doing that they needed to not do. Everything they were doing was fine. Like, they didn't really make any major mistakes or anything. That was the thing, is that Dying Friend was having a hard time with the fact that not much was really happening. Because Icons basically had... They had their side. They're expanding to the north. Nothing has really stopped. No harassment really happened. Kodachis were more on defensive than anything else over here. And the northeast got revealed way too soon. I mean, it kind of had... Well, they didn't really have to. The Heavy Tank Factory could have been built inside the southeast base. But sooner or later, that Mason would show up. So yeah, clever ploy. It's just doing that requires being very careful to hide it. Or get enough defenses that you don't need to hide it. A couple Stardusts or Skydusts, like, elevated on Terraform Stardust, would have done wonders here, just given how small the choke points are. That would have been perfect. And... And she brought pointing out in chat that Icons could have used a few darts to scout out, and that's true, they could have. The fact that they didn't definitely did not help them. I mean, they won, but Dimethrin wouldn't have gotten away with it if it were for meddling bikes. But there were no meddling bikes, there were no meddling darts, so it didn't matter. It was really that Mason, but that was six minutes in. Yeah, bit of a high-risk play. If the main base hadn't been destroyed... I imagine it would have gone a lot better, too, just because Icons would have felt more pressure from Dying Throne's main base, trying to get rid of that, or trying to get rid of the peripheral expansions near it, rather than thinking about the corner. Not to mention, Dying Throne would have been able to produce units for about a minute or so, which would have been quite a lot of production. Anyway, that was that, so we'll move on to another match, which will be between Kshatriya and North Chilean G. Stay tuned for that, it'll be up in just a moment.